All right, we're going to pick up where we left off in the previous video. We have applied some shaders to our model, but we can embellish this even further by using smart materials on top of or instead of using this. So for example, if I wanted more edge wear and perhaps more dirt and rust or things like that on the metal, I probably would want to use smart materials rather than relying just on shaders. Shaders are specific to sculpt objects, meaning objects that are imported into the sculpt workspace and typically very dense. With that stated, let's step into the paint workspace by clicking on the paint tab. And if I want, I can create a new paint layer to apply this to. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and name it while I'm at it. That's just SM for smart materials. And let's say bronze and then I'm going to look for a bronze material in my smart materials so let's go to metals or something like that and I'm going to turn symmetry off for the moment Let's hold down the Alt key and click on the visibility icon to isolate that layer. I can go to my Sculpt workspace and I can change the shader to something like a default shader. Click on the thumbnail. Let's see, I'll hide that. And let's go ahead and apply this to all that's visible. I'm switching to a default material now so I can see the ambient occlusion as well as the full smart material. There's not enough contrast in this current ambient occlusion layer, so I'm going to delete this one and just click on the thumbnail and it will generate a new one. OK. Curvature smoothing. Take that down. Hit OK. Okay, now it's moving on to the occlusion process. I'll pause while it calculates. I'll enable all three channels, then I'll open the preview window. I'm going to go ahead and unhide this bronze layer here. Now I'll click on the smart material and scale it in the preview options panel. From this point forward, I'm going to speed up most of the video in order to keep it as brief as possible and just try to explain the process as I go along. I'll collapse the preview window, select the fill tool, and I'll just pick the individual parts in order to fill them. I'm turning off symmetry first on each part. On the base helmet, I can see a little bit of a pattern, so I'm going to have to rescale the material. And then click again. At this point, I want to do a little bit of experimenting by switching back to that bronze shader that I had. But I'm going to bring a copy of the shader panel into the paint workspace by going to the Windows menu under pop-ups. And then that way I don't have to step into the sculpt workspace in order to access it. I just hit the paint layer and I'm sampling a few different shaders to see which one I prefer. Now I'm adjusting the opacity of the smart material on the layer and I'll go back to about 80%. I can also bring the depth of that paint layer down a bit and see how that looks. I'll also hold the Alt key and click on the visibility icon to restore the visibility of all the other layers. Now that we've applied our materials, we are ready to begin baking. The first thing we want to do is work on our UV, so I'll select something in the UV section of the tool panel and that will activate the UV tools. I'm now hiding everything but one object, that way I can work on one object at a time. 
So I clicked on auto seams just to see what kind of result I would get. And I think it's worth spending an extra 30 seconds to a minute getting a decent result. So I'll do it by hand. I just clicked clear seams to start all over again. And with edge loops, just a single click will select entire contiguous loops. If you select mark seams in the UV section, you can hold down the shift key in order to select contiguous loops as well. If you hold down the control key while holding down the shift key, it will deselect loops that you have already selected. So I'm just going through one at a time and doing this, and it's actually fairly easy. All right, so I finished with the seam selection. I clicked unwrap, and what I'm seeing is all the layers, all the meshes on every single one are assigned to the same UV set. The ones that are highlighted are the ones that are visible, and the ones that are not highlighted are the ones that are hidden. I have all the shells that I want to move to a new UV map selected, and after I create the new UV map, I go to the next drop list where I can move those shells to this newly created UV map. I'll go ahead and select Mark Seams in the UV section. And then I'm going to select the new UV map that I just created and rearrange some of the furniture. While I do this, I'll go ahead and pause the video and then come back once I have finished. Okay, we're now ready to do our baking once we have the UVs completed. I'm unhiding all the voxel or surface mode objects. At this point, I'm trying to evaluate how to handle all those ornaments that we created in the scope workspace. I can use the additional extrusion to pull it away from the surface a little bit. The next thing I want to do is use the name correspondence for baking option. That lets me bake individual parts separately from each other, and it'll do it in a sequence. It's contingent upon having exact naming correspondence between your retopo mesh layers and your sculpt tree objects. The next thing I'm going to do is dispose of the old low poly layers, but I may want to preserve those meshes so I can drag and drop those into the retopo models palette. That's what I'm doing here. Going over to the right side of the layer and just click and drag right into the palette. And 3D Coat stores a thumbnail for me. Now I'm going through and discarding each and every one of those. I'll go ahead and pause the video here and we're going to pick up in the next one looking at the bake scan settings dialog which allows us to make global or localized adjustments to our baking cage. So stay tuned and we'll see you then.